mjini Nakuru na basi tunakuja moja kwa moja kumbuka ni hafla ambayo Chacha Watu wa Mungu na wasalimu wa mjambo. Hamjambo. Jesus is coming soon. Get involved. We want to say we are very much privileged to host our global leader, Pastor Ted Wilson. He will be introduced at this right time. At this time, we are very grateful. Pastor Misiani, myself, Pastor Makori, we are going to recognize those who have come here in groups. And please, uh, we want to ask our esteemed church members from wherever you are, please wave at everybody. Thank you very much. You are welcome. All pathfinders who mounted um, a pathfinder parade, please, wherever you are, you are welcome. And God bless you, all choirs present. Those who are presented, those who are here to present, you are welcome. Thank you very much. And all pastors, and all pastors and ministers from other faith and the shepherdesses, we want you to feel welcome. You are in the presence of the Lord. And all invited guests, those who received letters from us, we want you to know that you are welcome. We want to welcome all fields and conference department directors, office workers. Please feel welcome. And all field and conference officers, you are welcome from the 11 entities and our institutions. 
And we have some names we want to mention, those who received our letters. Uh, the first one will be... Uh, Excellency Susan Kihika, the governor of Nakuru County. His Excellency Simbarati, the governor of Kisi County. Our Excellency Gladys Wanga, uh, governor of Homa Bay County. Uh, Honorable Ezekiel Machogu, CS Education. Honorable Moses Kajuang, Senator Homa Bay County. Honorable Samson Jeride, Senator Nandi County. Honorable Cynthia Muke, Women Representative Nandi County. Honorable Sam, uh, Samuel uh, Arama, MP Nakuru West Sub County. Honorable Mirio Diambo, uh, Super North MP. Honorable Chese Lelemwengit, uh, MP Emowen. Uh, constituency Nandi, Honorable Flemon Meli, Speaker, Nandi County Assembly, Honorable Kipkurui, Chepkwony, Presidential Advisor in All Interior Government Affairs, Kareb Nyamwenge, Acting Nakuru County, and David Maraga, uh, CJ Emeritus. And Dr. Fred Matiangi, former CS Interior. Her Excellency Sarah Serem, former Ambassador to China. Uh, Honorable Professor Sam Ungeri, former Senator Kisi County. Uh, Professor Philip Mayo, VC Baraton. Uh, Professor Marion Mutugi. Uh, Dr. Raymond Omolo, Internal Security. Uh, Honorable Nelson Marwa. Honorable Joel Bett. Honorable David Osian, former CS Trade. Honorable Martin Owino, MP in the UA. Honorable Harun Cheruyot, Professor Shelemia Kea. Honorable Rose Musao, Women Rep Makueni. Honorable Nelson Koech, MP Belgut. And Honorable Lily Kurui. We want all of you who are present to feel welcome, worship with us, enjoy the presence of God. And whether we have mentioned your name or not, and you are a uh, from the county government, from uh, NGO, and you are an Adventist, you are an Adventist, you are gracing the occasion, please we feel welcome. And if you don't feel in any category, you are welcome. May the Lord bless you all as you enjoy this fantastic, wonderful fellowship in the presence of our living God. Thank you. And now to go on, we want to recognize our institutions University of Eastern Africa staff led by Professor Mayo, please you are welcome. And uh, our institution, the Adventist University of Africa, Professor Njeti and your team, you are welcome. And at this time, we want to welcome uh, the East Central Africa Division staff that are present with your spouses and friends we want you to know you are most welcome. And at this time, we want to uh, welcome each one who has not fallen in the, uh, in the category, not forgetting our media team and all that have made this possible, Hope Channel, uh, Freelays, and anybody here feel welcome, please. And now we want to welcome the Possibility Ministry team uh, Madam, I don't know how we do welcome, but we are talking to the possibility. How do we do it? Welcome, everybody, welcome them. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 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 God bless you. And we also Amen. want to have our security who are among us as who have made this uh, possible. Please welcome wherever you are. And now you're going to be receiving a special music from the possibility group and now you will know that you are not learned just watch they'll be rejoicing and we want to invite everybody in this country particularly in this church to learn the sign language so that we can communicate with them god bless you enjoy the music
Mpenzi mtazamaji hiyo ni kwaya kutoka maeneo ya kisi ambao wanaimba kwa lugha ya kikisi wanasema kwamba siku ile Yesu atakapokuja basi tuweze kujiweka tayari maana yake hatujui saa hatujui siku ni ipi ambapo ataweza kurejea basi tuweze kuwa tayari kabisa na kwaya inayofuata basi ni kwaya ya victory kutoka maeneo ya kisumu ambao wanaenda kutumbuiza pia na kumsifu Mungu kwa wimbo kumbuka tumeweza kuelezea kwamba viongozi wengi wameweza kuja katika kwa eneo hili kiwemo waziri Fred Matiangi uh, waziri uh, uh, gavana Simba Arati kuna pia CJ uh, Maraga David Kenani Maraga yuko hapa na viongozi wengine wako katika eneo hili kwa ajili ya hafla hii basi tuweze kujiunga na wana victory wanapozidi kumtukuza Mwenyezi Mungu
na mkwaya ya Victory SDA kutoka maeneo ya Kisumu na mtazamaji hakika kanisa hili limeweza kubarikiwa sana na hali ya mziki kumsifu Mwenyezi Mungu ameweza kubarikiwa kweli kweli basi kwa hivi sasa namuona mchungaji Samuel Misiani wakiingia kwenye jukwaa ili kuweza kuhudumia na pia kuna mchungaji Samuel Magori wote Samuel wawili wakiwa kwenye jukwaa kuweza kuzungumza nasi hebu tuweze kusikiliza kutoka kwao wanapozungumza that we left behind we want to bring to you uh, the mp from nairobi uh, honorable tj kajuan we want to be very grateful uh, that you are here with us and all other national and county dignitaries please you're welcome and now it is our privilege to bring to you the president of east central africa division and when we say east central africa division we mean kenya and tanzania uganda and rwanda ethiopia and eritrea burundi somali and djibouti then republic of democratic republic of congo and south sudan those are 11 countries and the one who leads this territory he is also a vice president of the general conference we are talking of none other than dr blasius ruguri he's here with us he's in our territory and we are also in his territory and we want also to introduce his wife elizabeth and they are together at this time we want to invite them to the podium sir you may come Uh, mpenda wa bwana sisi kwa sababu ya wananchi wetu hapa Kenya hatuwezi kuzungumza Kiswahili i mean Kiingereza tu ni lazima tusalimie watu wa Mungu waamini wa imani ya kufunga historia ya ulimwengu wa Adventista wa Sabatu hapa katika inchi yetu tunayoipenda sana inchi ya Kenya. Hii ni siku kubwa kweli. Na ninafurahia sana sana kuona vile viongozi wetu wa maunion yetu mawili Union ya West Kenya Union Conference East Kenya Union Conference pamoja na mafield yake na ma conference yote jinsi wamepanga mkutano huu mkuu ambao tuna ugeni mzito sana ambao Mungu ametuletea katikati yetu ni mkutano wa baraka ni mkutano wa uponyaji uponyaji wa mwili kiroho na kila hali ya maisha kwa sababu ugeni huu si ugeni ambao tunaupata mara kwa mara ninaomba kila mmoja wetu wapendwa ambaye aliamua kufika hapa asiwe tu alikuja kwa sababu anataka kuona hata ikiwa kuona pia kuna faida yake lakini mtu awe kuna kitu alikuwa anatafuta ndani ya maisha yake akitazamia kusikia neno la Mungu neno ambalo litamubariki na ninasema hivi ya kwamba katika atua ya kiongozi wetu ambaye nitawajulisha kwa muda mfupi amekuwa na safari ndefu ya hapa Afrika 
akianzia kule Afrika ya Kusini na njana njana tu ndio Mungu akamjalia akakanyaga udongo wetu hapa Kenya na jambo la kwanza alilofanya tulipo alipofika ni kumpeleka kumsalimia kiongozi wa nchi ambaye ni rais wetu His Excellency William Ruto ambaye alimpokea kwa furaha kubwa na tukawa na muda mwema mzuri wa fellowship na kiongozi wa nchi pamoja pia kumtolea maombi makubwa katika kazi kubwa alionayo ya kuongoza taifa letu la Kenya na kutokea pale tukawa tunaelewa vizuri kulingana na vile tuliongozwa na viongozi wetu daktari Misiani na daktari Makori our presidents of the two unions ya kwamba sasa tutakuja hapa katika jiji la Nakuru na kama kawaida mnaelewa Kenya sasa imegawiwa vizuri katika maeneo yanayoitwa counties na hapa tuko kwenye county ya Nakuru na ilibindi pia tuweze kumsalimia the county governor wetu hapa Nakuru county our excellency eh, Susan Kihika na tulikuwa na muda mzuri naye katika ofisi yake mahali pia kiongozi wetu wa kanisa la Adventista wa Sabato duniani aliweza pia kutoa maombi baada ya mazungumzo mazuri ya kutilia na nguvu katika safari sisi wote wanandamu tulio nayo tunapomaliza safari hii ya hapa ulimwenguni ambaye anasimama nami hapa kwa vile mnavyojua hatuwezi tukafanya kazi bila uzaindizi wa wake zetu Mungu mwenyewe aliona inafaa hapo mwanzoni alipomwambia Adamu au aliposema aimfai Adamu kukaa peke yake Kwa hivyo akamwambia mke ambaye anaitwa Hawa na Hawa wangu yuko hapa na mimi Jina lake ni Elizabeth Ruguri alitupa lile la kwanza akanichukua langu kulingana na kanuni yote ya utukufu wa Mungu. Kwa hivyo nitamwomba mama Elizabeth asalimie mkutano, awapungie mkono na ili nipate uji njioni nikirudi nyumbani muweze kujibu huo mkono wake vizuri ili apate furaha ya kumtosha. Brothers and sisters, good afternoon. When I was coming, I received a very urgent message. Do you want to, to hear what the message was saying? Yeah. Are you sure you want to hear? Yeah. Raise up your hands, those you want to hear. The message was saying, Jesus is coming soon. Get involved. God bless you. And it sounds like a very urgent message. Jesus is coming soon. It has become the talk of the Seventh day Adventist Church in these days of the end. Nakiongozuetu will speak more about this. I'm very proud, Dr. Makori, Dr. Misiani, to know that uh, in our midst here, are very honorable guests who have also created space in their very, very busy time. When I see my dear brother, Honorable Kajuang, a man of God who has persisted in this faith despite the call of God to join politics, and his politics is also to support the faith, 
I am so proud of you, Honorable Kajuan, and I'm happy also for other senior guests. I see there, Professor Ongeri. Uh, 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 I have been with Professor Ongeri in many meetings. I remember one time he saved me when we had a serious meeting in Gusi Stadium, and there were many politicians there who wanted to make speeches. And they told me, Pastor, when you stand up, tell them today's Sabbath, they will only wave, they will not make any speeches. And, and when I declared that, all of them were kind enough to not make any speeches, but just greeting the people. I may not see everyone and know their names, but uh, kindly. Ah, Senator Bohoma Bay. There you are, my brother, Honorable. Uh, yeah. No. Th that one is the junior. Kajuan. Ah, Thank you very much. We are a blessing church. We are a blessing church. We have all these our honorable. I see another lady after Professor Ongeri. Uh, what do you call that one? I okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Let me use Rachel, Honorable Rachel, MCA for Molo. Nice to have you with us, uh, Honorable. Thank you very, very much. What about this Honorable lady next to uh, Honorable Kajuang right here at the beginning? Oh, MCA from Nandi. Ah? Uh? <laughs> oh, Honorable Kajuang, now Kachelewa kuni jurisha mafem. <laughs> I don't want to make those kind of mistakes. Yeah? Yeah. Anyway, uh, every one of you, our dear leaders in the world uh, uh, leadership and uh, national leadership, leadership, you want to know that we are very, very happy and proud that you are able to come to help us receive our world leader who is among us. Yeah. So let me, because of time, we have lost a lot of time. We had all these events which we did not foresee uh, when we left in Nairobi, but uh, let it suffice uh, to say that we are very, very proud of each and every one of you, our church members from all over this nation who have come. I know you are only a fractional uh, representation of our large membership of over one million here in Kenya. Uh, I want to report to you that your division, uh, and I should, maybe Elder Ted Wilson will mention this one, is, is very humbled to see the blessing of God that has come upon us, that we lead the world in uh, membership with five million members that. plus. And we are working very, very hard to double this membership by the year the 2025 when we will close this quinquennium. It's a very, very ambitious dream, but we depend on God, we rely on God to help us when all of us are involved. You, you hear what uh, Mama Ruguri has just said about this message she received on our way here. Uh, she will tell me tonight how this message came upon her, that Jesus, Jesus our Lord, is coming soon. And the call is, let us all be involved. Uh, the seat of this division that our leaders help us to understand what it means, the division of the one church, which is comprised of those countries they counted for us, the headquarters is based here in Kenya, in Nairobi. And the whole division office is here today with us. And as you might, you might guess, it draws its leadership from across all these countries that were named and actually beyond. Because divisions are not constituted uh, territories. We are uh, a branch of the General Conference. 
And so we cannot limit where we draw leadership from. Uh, we are people uh, working with us from the United States of America. We have people working with us from Pakistan. We have people working with us from South Africa, which is uh, our sister uh, division, SID, where our world leader just arrived from. And so I want you to take the honor of having the whole division uh, office family assemble, assembling with us here today. So Dr. Makori, Dr. Misiani, I want you to know you are lucky uh, when we go to Tanzania, this will not be possible for the division. So uh, let me bring the man of God uh, to you. By the way, you need to know that this is a pastoral visit which our world leader is making here in ECD and now here in Kenya. You need to receive this as a pastoral visit with a pastoral message, with a pastoral heart, and Please, with a pastoral ahead. spirit. I will ask you to pay special attention to the message that we will receive today. Pastor Ten N.C. Wilson is the president of the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The Adventist Church is probably the largest Protestant Christian denomination in the world. With approximately 22 million members, the church exists in more than 210 countries, uh, including Kenya, where the membership of the church currently stands at 1.13 million. The church exists to make disciples of Jesus Christ, bringing hope, healing, and encouragement through tens of thousands of schools, hospitals, broadcast networks, and of course churches around the world. Pastor Wilson has served in the gospel ministry for the past 40 years, 49 years, in various positions as a local church pastor, a ministry leader, division officer, review and the Herald Publishing Association president. And he has served also as a general vice president of the General Conference. In, 20, in 2010, Pastor Wilson was elected by the representatives of the One Church to serve as the president of this worldwide movement or church. Though his experience in the launch, in the launch work is global, in a very special way, Pastor Wilson has always been a son and a friend of Africa. One time we were talking and they told me something about Egypt which is within the continent of Africa. Uh, I think his father served as missionary there. I will elaborate this for us. He will mention to you where else he served in the continent. And his heart is so soft, is so soft about Africa. And so you will meet a person who loves Africa. And it is not, not the geography of Africa that he loves. It is the people of Africa, and more so, the flock of God Church in this continent of Africa. He was born in Tacoma Park, Maryland, in the United States of America, but was raised on African soil, again, as I mentioned, in the land of Egypt. God has also let him serve for considerable portions of his ministry here in Africa. He has served at the division level in what was known then as the Africa Indian Ocean Division as Ministerial and Stewardship Secretary, Health and Temperance Director, and finally as the Assistant Secretary of that division. As an adopted son of this continent, why can't you shout on that one? Amen. Oh yes, you need to say a big amen as an adopted son of the continent of Africa. Pastor Wilson speaks fluent French, which is a language that is so important to many of us. And our division, ECD, 
is actually a bilingual division uh, because English is spoken here and French mm -hmm. is spoken. And I'm actually, okay it is like wind. halfway. Half of this division speaks English, half think, of it speaks okay French. Among the many significant blessings that the Lord has delivered to his church through Pastor Wilson's leadership are the wonderful revival and reformation movement uh, initiatives and the precious total member in involvement efforts which have led to the East Central Africa Division becoming the home of more than five million Seventh-day Adventists. Here in Africa, of course, we never fail to recognize the great blessing that we receive whenever the wife of Pastor Wilson, Mrs. Nancy Wilson, is with us. Together, they have a beautiful family of three married daughters and ten grandchildren. Pastor Wilson's commitment to the fundamentals of our faith, prayer, Bible study ministry, prophetic liberation, and the bold proclamation of the three angels' messages is doing much to prepare God's church and the world for the soon return of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so at this moment, I want to present to you our dear leaders and members of the church here in Kenya for you to rise up on your feet as you wave uh, to this great couple, Ted Wilson and his dear wife, Nancy. Please let us rise just to show them the warmest welcome that we can afford to offer to them. Pastor Wilson, you can see it by your own eyes. Madam Nancy, you can see it. This is the acceptance that the people, the believers of Kenya, are giving to you. God bless you as you minister to us this great day that God has made. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much. Bless you. Elizabeth, thank you. Thank you. Jumbo. Hmm? Okay. Jumbo. Karibu, Habari, Asante Sana. What a great privilege to be with you here in Nakuru. What a marvelous opportunity to worship God together even on a Monday. I am so grateful to literally thousands of you who have come to, to greet us, to receive us, to welcome us on a Monday. If we had arranged this for a Sabbath, this beautiful arena and stadium would not be large enough. We know that. But we are so grateful you are here. And those of you who are seated in the far distance there, sometime before we leave, I want to walk along with my wife and greet you even more closely and also under the tent and way over in that beautiful uh, stadium stands there. We thank God that he is providing beautiful weather for us. What an opportunity to be part of God's great church. Do you want to say something? My wife is here with me. I want her to at least greet you and to bring you warm greetings from your brothers and sisters around the world. When we left Africa, we left part of our hearts here, and it's always wonderful to come back. You have something special on this continent that the whole world needs to, um, 
You need to share it with the world. So for us, it's like coming home, and we are touched, as the pastor said, that so many of you came out uh, on a Monday. And we have loved the music. We look forward to fellowship. And thank you so much for what you're doing here in this country. It's an inspiration to the world. Just take it back. We have just arrived yesterday from the country of Zambia, where we have spent a number of days visiting our church members there. And I want you to know that our church members in Zambia, about 1.2 million brothers and sisters, send their greetings to you here in Kenya. God is doing something extraordinary on this, camp, on this beautiful continent. God is working in the hearts of people to bring about a focus upon evangelism and upon God's great word. Upon our arrival in Nairobi, it was our very, very special privilege to proceed directly to State House and to have a wonderful meeting with His Excellency President Ruto. What a privilege it was to meet with him yesterday. He is guiding this country in the right direction, helping people to be united in helping other people in your communities, in your counties, and yes, the entire nation of Kenya. He was so gracious in allowing us time to be with him. And the beautiful setting in which we held the meetings. He had it arranged so that we would meet outside in a beautiful park that is part of State House. It was probably one of the nicest places to meet a head of state that I have ever been in. I just want to thank him for his graciousness. At the end of our meeting, we will pray for him, we will pray for the country, and we will pray for you. I want to also extend a great appreciation to uh, Her Excellency, uh, the governor of Nakuru County, uh, Susan Kihike, she, she received us so well and nicely just a few minutes ago, just uh, an hour ago or so. What a privilege to have the opportunity of meeting her, a very vivacious person, a very excitable person, someone who truly is focused upon helping the people of Nakuru County. And what a privilege it was to be with her. I want to express ex special appreciation to members of parliament who are here, to those who are in government, those who are in police, those who are working in ministries. And I want to tell you, Seventh-day Adventists have an amazing impact and influence in the entire country of Kenya, and I praise God for your spiritual influence. Thank you for that. Let us pray for our leaders. Pray for those who are influential. Pray for those who will give vision to the people. You see, Seventh-day Adventists, we try to stay carefully on the side of lifting up God and not become involved in intense politics. And yet God has chosen certain people to be representatives like Joseph and like Daniel, like Esther, to be part of those governments and those entities that can help lift the vision of a country. And I praise God for those that the Lord has led into positions. My counsel to you is, as I shared with 
uh, his honorable and excellent, uh, the excellency, his president, the president, uh, President William Ruto. I shared with him Micah 6, 8, where God has showed us what is that which he requires of us. And that is to do that which is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. So I charge all of you who are dignitaries, who are part of our retinue here today, who are Seventh-day Adventists, use your position to the glory of God. Do that which is right. Love mercy in your relationships with people and walk humbly with your God. I want to thank uh, many who have put together this program today. Now it was decided that we would not have translation. Uh, there are many people all across Kenya and beyond, many people who speak other languages as well. So I will try to speak slowly and deliberately and I hope all of you will understand my words because we're going to be looking at the Word of God, at the mission of the church, at what God wants to do for his people in Kenya as we move into the future coming closer and closer to the second coming of Jesus Christ. I believe with all my heart that we are nearing the second coming of Jesus. What a privilege to be part of his Advent movement. I want to express deep appreciation to those in our two unions here in Kenya. I want to express deep appreciation to uh, Pastor Makori and Pastor Misiani. What a privilege to have them and their colleagues working with us. All the local conferences and fields. What a privilege to meet so many of them today. We are together in this great emphasis to bring the three angels' messages of Jesus, revealing his righteousness and pointing people back to the true worship of God. What a privilege to be part of the Advent movement. Thank you to the pathfinders and master guides who have welcomed us all along the way. We are grateful for those young people. Can you give a hearty amen for the young people? Beautiful. Young people feel a part of the church. Feel a part of what God is doing through you to bring about a revival and a reformation amongst young people and older ones. Young people are precious to us. I want to thank also our choirs. I took a number of videos of the choirs standing on this, this podium, this uh, platform, and what a privilege it will be to share that on my official Facebook page all around the world. The choirs of Kenya singing to the glory of God. Thank you for what you have done to help us here today. I also want to thank the Adventist Possibility Ministries. They had a special choir here that helped us to understand better how they can relate to God's wonderful church. And uh, Pastor Paul, I want to thank you for the work you have done in that area. What a blessing that has been and a model for all of the world. I wish to pay special appreciation also to one of our church members who owns a helicopter. And Nancy and I and Pastor Raguri and his wife Elizabeth had the privilege of flying in the helicopter from Nairobi, Advent Hill, to Nakuru. Now many in our party took about three or four hours to drive, but we were able to fly uh, directly here in the helicopter. I want you to know that we are so grateful because our Adventist brother 
who owns the company that sponsors the helicopter, has given that special ride as a free gift to God's church. Praise be to God for generous Seventh-day Adventists who will give of their means to furthering the gospel of Jesus Christ. What an opportunity for each of us today to focus upon this amazing arrangement that has been put together by your division, the East Central Africa Division. I'm so proud of this division. I identify with this division. I love this division. You have done something in excess beyond what most other places in the world have done. You have taken total member involvement to a new height, to a wonderful opportunity so that everyone can be involved in doing something for Jesus. This division is now our largest division membership-wise in the world. Almost five million members. And they have ambitious plans, which they have voted, which you are a part of, to double the membership in the very near future. That will be a tremendous blessing by the Holy Spirit coming down and working with every one of you. Everyone saying, yes, Lord, I will go. I will be part of this magnificent Advent movement at the end of time. For Jesus is absolutely coming soon. And I suppose, my dear friends, my message to you today is that we need to be prepared personally and prepare others for this climactic event when Jesus will return. When you hear the word, which is Greek, Maranatha, you will know that that is a distinct reference to the second coming of Jesus. What a privilege to, to know that our local churches are working in concert with this beautiful focus. I was given, as an example, I was given a beautiful magazine that has been produced by the New Life SDA Church in Nairobi. It, it shows a baptism on the front of the cover. Every local church needs to be driven by the wonderful understanding that God is working in a most marvelous way to bring about the conversion of people. You know, don't get discouraged. Don't lose heart, as the Bible says. It tells us in the book of Galatians that if you will persevere, and not faint. God will provide a harvest for you. God is going to bless you in your plans in the East Central Africa Division. We will be traveling with your president, Pastor Raguri, and others to uh, Tanzania, as has been mentioned. It will be a great privilege to be there. And then to DRC, to Kinshasa. It's been a few years since I've been in Kinshasa, one of the largest cities on the continent of Africa. But we will be there to encourage our people, to bring hope and vision. I want you to pray for our trip. Pray that when we have meetings like this, people will be inspired to be part of the last day proclamation of God's word and the three angels' messages of Revelation 14 and the fourth angel of Revelation 18, drawing people back to the true worship of God. You see, at the very core of those three angels' messages is the righteousness of Christ, his justifying righteousness, his sanctifying righteousness, that which will help us to become more and more like Jesus. And that's why the over one million Kenyan Seventh-day Adventists are having such an impact on this country because God is working through you. However, the devil doesn't like it. 
He doesn't like what God's church is doing. He doesn't like what you are doing. He wants to do everything he can to bring about hesitation, distraction. In the book of Philippians chapter 3, we read in verses 13 and 14. It says here, Paul is speaking, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, one thing, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the, the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. My dear friends here in Nakuru, I want to urge you, as well as all of those who are watching across this nation of Kenya and beyond, and I want to thank Hope Channel for the amazing work that they are doing, Hope Channel Kenya. And Hope Channel all across the world is doing a magnificent job in bringing the gospel and the Advent message to the hearts of people. As I said, we were just in Zambia, and Hope Channel Zambia was doing a marvelous job. Here, Hope Channel Kenya is streaming these marvelous opportunities to people everywhere. But I want to tell you, the devil is not happy. He wants to distract you. He wants to get you to look at other things. He doesn't care what it is. He wants to take you off of that one goal, as the Apostle Paul indicates, looking to those things which are forward, not behind. I want to encourage Seventh-day Adventists throughout Kenya to be united in the mission of the church, to be united in spiritual things, not to get sidetracked into various challenges that bring about differences of opinion, disunity, and distraction. People's own opinions are good, but don't push your opinion to the limit at the expense of hurting other people. Work together in a united way. God wants us not to be in dissension and disunity, but focused on the goal. And your division, the East Central Africa Division, has given you an amazing goal. Doubling the membership, everyone bringing someone to Jesus this year. What an opportunity. But the devil doesn't like that. He wants to bring in division, dissension, disunity, and distraction. Don't allow tribal, racial, caste differences. Don't allow anything to divide you in this one goal that Paul says he is pressing towards, being in the service of Jesus Christ. You may face economic difficulties. You may face climate difficulties. At the end of our time together, I will pray, and I have prayed already, that God will send rain on the country of Kenya and upon the East African region. God knows the trouble you're facing. God knows the challenges. But don't let economic difficulties distract you from the real mission. Don't allow political or uh, other reasons to divide and distract you from what God has indicated. Don't allow social activities that put some people higher than others to in some way distract them from the real mission. Let me tell you a beautiful quotation from the Spirit of Prophecy. And I'm going to give you a few quotations today. It will be an opportunity for us to understand this great mission God has provided to his people. The Spirit of Prophecy, and I want to thank all of you who give such strong support to the Holy Word of God. 
and to the instructions given to us in the spirit of prophecy given to us by God through Ellen White. I believe that the spirit of prophecy is one of the greatest gifts given to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Use it. Read it. It points you back to the Word of God and to Jesus who is the living Word. In the book Testimonies for the Church, volume 9, page 19, it says, in a special sense, Seventh-day Adventists have been set in the world as watchmen and light bearers. This is your work here in East Central African Division. This is your work here in Kenya. You have been sent as watchmen and light bearers. It says to them, to you, has been entrusted the last warning for a perishing world. Let me tell you, Nancy and I travel many places around the world. You see the news every day. You know the world is disintegrating before your very eyes. Political situations, economic situations, ecumenical attempts to unite churches. And let me make a statement. Seventh-day Adventists believe in religious liberty for all religions and people. We champion religious liberty and freedom of conscience. But I want to tell you something. Seventh-day Adventists will never compromise on Bible truth. Seventh-day Adventists stand to recognize that the prophecies in Daniel and Revelation and the book of Matthew, they are absolutely accurate. And the wonderful book, The Great Controversy, I believe every word and accept every word in The Great Controversy. Don't let anyone on social media or wherever say, oh, you know, Wilson is not really very supportive, etc. People can say anything, but I know what is in my heart and yours. God be with you in a special way as you lift up Bible truth. So this last warning has been given to us. On them is shining, I'm reading now, on them is shining wonderful light from the word of God. They have been given a work of the most solemn import. What is it? The proclamation of the first, second, and third angel's messages. They are to allow nothing else to absorb their attention. This one thing I do, forgetting the things in the past and pressing towards the goal, the mark of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the book Great Controversy, which I just mentioned, on page 488, and let me tell you, thank you to the East Central Africa Division for your strong, strong support in the Great Controversy Project 2.0. Handing out, delivering, sharing millions of copies of the book, The Great Controversy. This book was a book Ellen White said she wanted circulated more than any other book she ever wrote because it contains a beautiful history of the church and believers and into the very near future because we know what is going to happen. We know that liberties will be curtailed, that people will be put on the spot to declare whether or not they believe in the full gospel message or whether there is syncretism, whether there is some kind of ecumenical compromise. My brothers and sisters, do not compromise on Bible truth. Stay close to the word of God. And in that book, The Great Controversy, which you will be handing out during the years 2023 and 2024, it is the missionary book of the year for the entire globe. Listen to these words. Page 488. Satan invents unnumbered schemes to occupy our minds that they may not dwell upon the very work with which we ought to be best acquainted. 
I don't know your background. I don't know your home situation, your work situation. But let me tell you, the devil knows exactly what you're doing, and he wants to distract you. He wants you to take your eyes off of this. I press towards this mark and this goal, as Paul has said. He wants to distract you in any way he can. It says, going on here, the arch deceiver hates the great truths that bring to view an atoning sacrifice by Jesus, an all-powerful mediator. He knows that with him everything depends on his diverting minds from Jesus and his truth. Brothers and sisters in Kenya, don't let anything distract you from the proclamation of the final message to prepare this world for Jesus very soon coming. What an opportunity for us to focus upon Christ, his righteousness, his salvation, his sanctuary message, his three angels' messages, his health message. Let me stop there for a moment. God wants you to be a vibrant Seventh-day Adventist. He wants you to take care of your health. He wants you to drink enough pure water. I know you need rain in order to get that. He wants you to eat the proper foods. He wants you to stay away from things that will debilitate your body because your mind is part of your body. He wants you to be healthy in every way. 3 John verse 2 says that God wants us to be in spiritual health and in physical health. So that is part of God's great message. We're not saved by how we eat or drink, but we do that to the glory of God. I have to tell you personally, I have been a vegetarian all my life. And it has given me strength and ability, and I praise God for that. Eat simply. Drink that which is the best. Get exercise. Drink water. God wants to use your life. He doesn't want you to get sick. Now, I know we live in a sinful world, and everyone is subject to illness. But you have a better chance if you live healthfully, and God will bless your life by your doing that. What an opportunity for us to share with people the second coming of Jesus Christ. To understand that he has given to us a very specific commission. But again, the devil is busy to distract you from that mission. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9, page 216. Listen to these two sentences. It is Satan's object to keep Christians occupied in controversies among themselves. He knows that if they do not watch, the day of the Lord will come on them as a thief in the night. My dear brothers and sisters here in Kenya, I cannot underscore enough, underline enough, don't let the devil distract you with anything. Keep your eyes focused only upon Jesus and his precious truth. In the wonderful book of 1 Corinthians, it gives us a very good model as to how we are to keep our eyes focused in a race that we are running. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, we see what Paul is explaining here, and really he was outlining what was happening in the old Greek system where they had games, which now we have the Olympic Games, which countries from around the world participate in in order to show who are the best athletes. Those games had their origination in the Isthmian Games in Greece, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And we see this reflected in references by Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning with verse 24. It says, Do you not know that those who run in a race 
all run, but one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. Now, some of you here, especially the young people, are great athletes. Uh, Kenya has produced amazing long-distance runners, those who are admired by the world. Those athletes take time to practice. They take time to prepare. They have one objective when they are preparing, and that is to win. Now, many of us have, of course, gone through schools. We've participated in various athletic events. Uh, I used to enjoy running a lot. I still like it. Uh, it's enjoyable, but I don't, I'm not as fast as I used to be. But those young people who are in, an, in a race, when you are in a race, you have to remember one thing. When you are running in the race, you do not even take two seconds to turn and see who is following you, how close the competitor is behind you. You will lose seconds and you may lose if you do that. The one thing you focus on is the end line where the race will end. You cannot be distracted by anything. Now, Paul points out that people are in races, but only one wins. You might be interested to know that uh, some of the uh, people who were in these races, those who won, received special prizes. Let's, let's look at verse 25. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. They are careful. They are very uh, appropriately organized for their uh, special race. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown but we for an imperishable crown. What was Paul referring to here? Well, when a runner was able to win a beautiful race in the Isthmian Games, the precursor to the Olympic Games, they would, uh, they, they would give him a crown of leaves, special leaves that would encircle him as the great winner of the race. They would take the person to, the, to his home city and they would cut a new gate into that city and name it for this person. He received great honor, but it was temporary. How long does a crown of leaves last? How long is it from just a few years later people will say, well, I don't know who named this gate. I don't even know who the person is. You see, in this world, achievements are only temporal. They are very temporary. But you and I are in a race. As Paul said, we are pressing toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. God does not want you to get distracted in any way. And the beautiful thing about the Christian race and about your working in total member involvement, in doubling your membership, in bringing people to the foot of the cross, is that everyone can be a winner. A winner in Jesus Christ. And so that's what Paul was saying there. He said, we are headed towards an imperishable crown. Won't it be wonderful when we get to heaven? And Jesus, I don't know how he's going to do it, but he will. There will be millions of people in heaven. He knows who will be there. By God's grace, all of us will be there. And he will take time to place a crown on your head. It may take him a long time, but you know what? We're going to have eternity in heaven. What a wonderful understanding of the magnificent time that we will spend in heaven. And the crown that he will give to us will be an imperishable crown. It will not fade. But you know what we're going to do with those crowns? We're going to take those crowns and we're going to put them at the feet of Jesus. And, and we are going to say, heaven was cheap enough. In other words, whatever I gave up for being a, 
a wonderful follower of Jesus was so insignificant because Jesus has given me salvation and eternal life through his grace and his blood. What a wonderful opportunity for us to share with Jesus our amazing gratitude for running the Christian race and not being distracted. The Bible goes on to say in verse 26, Paul says, Therefore, because we're going to get an imperishable crown, a crown that will give us a wonderful sense of God's love for us and his righteousness, he says, I run thus, not with uncertainty. I don't just kind of run along without a goal, not as one who beats the air, an allusion to those who were in the games who would have boxing matches and this kind of thing. You don't just box just into the air. No, you make everything count. You run with a purpose. He says in verse 27, But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. My dear brothers and sisters in Kenya, do not let the devil distract you in any way from the race you are running to not only achieve through the grace and blood of Jesus eternal life, but also to share it with someone else. Total member involvement, saying, yes, Lord, I will go. I will be part of revival and reformation. Re reformation. I will be part of mission to the cities. I will be part of comprehensive health ministry. I will be part of community services. I will be part of sharing Christian literature, Adventist literature, and the great controversy with people. Don't let anything distract you from this amazing opportunity to allow God to work through you. In Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9, page 188. It says, Strive earnestly for unity. Pray for it. Work for it. Crucify self. Esteem others better than yourselves. Don't allow the devil to bring disunity into your local church, into your family into your association with his precious, wonderful church. In the same book, uh, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9, on page 189, it says, Though professing to be converted, we carry around with us a bundle of self that we regard as all too together too precious to be given up. Let self be lost in Jesus. Let your focus be on him and on the goal he has before you, rather than on yourself. And then this last quotation that I want to share with you. It says here in the same book, page 187, we have no right to keep our minds stayed on ourselves, our preferences and our fancies. We are not to seek to maintain a peculiar identity of our own. In other words, don't go around saying, oh, look at me, I'm doing this and I'm doing... Even if you're doing things for good reasons, don't try to draw, draw attention to yourself. I'm not needing to have a peculiar identity of our own, a personality, an individuality, which will separate us from our fellow laborers. God is calling you to be united in him as you press forward towards the mark, the goal of your high calling in Jesus Christ. As you share this message across this beautiful, wonderful, important country of Kenya, God is wanting to use you in a most remarkable and absolutely powerful way. Keep your eyes on Jesus. The story is told about a hunter in a village, the chief hunter, 
who was getting older and knew that he needed to find another young man to carry out the work of the chief hunter. Now those of you who come from particular villages, you know how hunting is part of the culture, part of the activity of a particular tribe or people. So this particular hunter found three young men who could be potential chief hunters for the village. And he talked to these young men, he said, you must do exactly as I indicate to you if you want to be the chief hunter. Oh yes, sir, we, we've watched you, we know what you do, we will try to be the best chief hunter possible. He said, we will have a test to see which one of you will be the chief hunter. The day appointed came, he took the three young men, vibrant people, people who knew what they were doing, he took them into the forest. Now he gave them instruction. He said, when you are aiming your gun at the bird, you must keep your eye on the bird's eye. Do you understand? Oh yes, sir, no problem. We, we, we understand you perfectly clear. Okay, young man, first young man, you take your rifle. Look up in the tree. Now, I'm not a hunter myself, but you know what I mean when people are hunting. He said, do you see that bird in the tree? Yes, I see the bird. Tell me, what do you see in the tree? I see the eye of the bird. Excellent. You have done very well. But you know, your eyesight, young man, you are younger than I am. You can see all kinds of things. What else do you see? Oh, yeah, I see a lot of branches in the tree. Oh, your eyesight is really good. Do you see anything else? Oh, yeah, I see some clouds beyond the tree. Young man, put your gun down. Second young man. Point your rifle. What do you see, young man? Oh, I see the eye of the bird. You're very attentive. Thank you. But what else do you see? I'm sure your eyesight is even better than the first one. What do you see? Well, I see a lot of leaves in the tree. Aha, uh -huh, you've got good eyesight. Do you see anything else? Oh, I see a monkey in the tree. Young man, put your gun down. Third young man, point your rifle. What do you see? I see the eye of the bird. Excellent, you have followed my instructions. Very good, but you along with your others, you have good eyesight. What do you see? I see the eye of the bird. Young man, don't show disrespect to me. You already told me that. What else do you see in the tree? I see the eye of the bird. Fire your gun, young man. You, you are the chief hunter. My dear friends, never, ever take your eyes off of Jesus Christ. Don't ever take your eyes off the precious word of God. Don't take your eyes off of the instruction in the spirit of prophecy. Don't be deviated in any way, distracted from personal prayer activity. Be a Bible student, be a student of the word, and be part of God's people who are people of the book, and never, ever get distracted from sharing with others the wonderful word of God, the truth that has set you free, the truth that has made you who you are as a Seventh-day Adventist at the end of time, waiting for Jesus' soon return. Keep your eyes on Jesus. One of these days, very soon, we will look up into the eastern sky and we will see a small cloud approaching. I can guarantee you 
that day all around the world it will not be a rainy day because the Bible says every eye will see Jesus that little cloud will get larger and larger it will be a little cloud about half the size of a man's hand we're told it will get brighter and brighter soon the entire sky will be filled with all of heaven poured out every every angel from heaven will be there and the interesting thing is every eye around the world will see it not in delayed time not because of hope channel not because of media they will see it at the same time all around the world regardless of what time it is because it will be a miracle of God and we'll look up into the sky and we'll look into the middle of the cloud and in the middle of the cloud we will see the one who has taken off his priestly robes. He's interceding for us right now in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Don't let anyone dissuade you of the wonderful intercessory ministry of Jesus in the most holy place right now, the sanctuary service. He will have taken off those priestly robes, put on his kingly robes, and he will be coming back to take us home as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we will look up into the sky and we will see Jesus. And we will say, this is our God. He is the one who will save us. And Jesus will look down and he'll say, well done, good and faithful servants. Enter into the joy of your Lord. The trumpet sound that will take place at the second coming of Christ will shake the graves of those who have believed in Jesus and have died and have been in the ground. That's another important topic that you need to share with the people of Kenya so that they have hope in the future. When you die,
I attempt through your power to bring at least one soul into the church. Would you raise your hands? Amen. Amen. Pastor Riguri, you are seeing these beautiful hands raised. People are committing themselves. Praise the Lord. Let me pray with you. Father in heaven, we are so grateful for these faithful members here in Nakuru, Kenya, and all across this magnificent nation of Kenya, and in East Africa, and wherever people may be watching or listening. Give them a sense of your purpose in their lives. Help them not to be in any way distracted from the goal of running the Christian race through your power, to keep their eyes focused only upon you your holy word, to stay in contact with you every day so that disunity and distraction and fracturing cannot take place because God is in control of their lives. Lord, we long for the day when Jesus will return. Help each one of us now to bring someone to the foot of the cross through the power of the Holy Spirit. Bless the East Central Africa Division. Bless our two unions here in Kenya. Every conference and every mission, every local church, every pastor, literature evangelist, health worker, publishing worker, and our educators. Lord, bless each one of our members in this wonderful country of Kenya. Now, Lord, I want to ask in a special way that you will be with this country, be with its president, be with government officials, be with members of parliament, many of whom are Seventh-day Adventists. I ask that you will give them wisdom and guidance in all they do. Help them not to be distracted either in any way from helping to lift the people of Kenya into a better setting and better level where they can then glorify God and share these precious Bible truths with others. But Lord, I ask in a special way that you will look down with kindness on Kenya and East Africa and other areas. And Lord, I earnestly 